Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video, but with a bit of a difference. I've actually got a special guest on today, Chosen. Um, Chosen, welcome to the channel firstly, and I guess share with us your, your big news and, and the reason for joining the channel. Hey, what's up, uh, Hell Hades? Thanks for having me over on your channel. What's up, everybody? Yeah, I wanted to, uh, to come by and mainly kind of take an opportunity here on a, on a big platform like you have with your channel to properly give thanks to the Rage of the Legends community for five years of, of exciting times and, and progress for me in my gaming career and supporting me throughout the years because I am going to be officially kind of done uh, covering Raid here on my main channel and stepping into to other roles and other opportunities and wanted to definitely take a video to, to thank everybody throughout the uh, five years of, of fun that I've had here in the community. So I'd like to thank Watcher of Realms for sponsoring this video. So what a time to get involved. We have got one of the biggest banners they've ever had in the game coming up this Friday. Okay, so we've got a new champion, which we're going to go through. We've also got probably my most used legendary, Kame, on a times 15 coming up this weekend. The best AoE mage in the game. There will be a link down below, or you can use the QR code to download and get involved. It will download to now a PC client, which looks beautiful. I actually play on my PC client, but I also play on my uh, mobile device using the same account cross-platform. I play this game daily. I do content on it on my other channel as well, which you should check out. That'll be in the pinned comment. Kame basically pumping out tons of AoE damage from afar, nuking through a wave outside of his, his own range. Super cool champion. Kame is literally a game changer. We've also got a shard summoning event. This is like a fusion and it's for a Lord. This one is also starting on Friday and they are super comfortable to get if you're playing the game. Like compared to some other games, they make these Lords really, really achievable. And Lords make a big difference to your account because anyone who's part of their faction gets additional stats. So lastly, then we've got the other new legendary that's come into the game here, Edith who is a tank. Uh, so you see Defender up here. So what's going on here then? All damage dealt scales off of defense. This is unusual in Watcher of Realms. When deployed, immediately gains two stacks of Equine Aegis here. When taking damage, consumes one stack to reduce damage by 30%. Each stack owned uh, increases damage dealt and healing received as well. So this is going to be interesting. I wonder what sort of damage level we get here. AoE damage. Oh, nice. Look at that ult actually sweet so when the skill is activated each attack deals 150 percent aoe damage up to eight enemies in range that's actually pretty damn cool yeah a tank which is doing aoe damage sounds good to me if you want to get involved don't forget you can use my link down below watch your realms is a great game and uh yeah i recommend getting involved anyway let's get back to the video yeah well i said i, I guess firstly you know i since i started playing raid you were one of the creators that I followed and watched uh you know probably when was it like maybe april whatever year that was four years ago four or five years 2019. ago uh, yeah 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 2019 yeah i was i kind of look started to look for content when i first started playing this game and i think it was your channel incredible johns i feel like there was one more in the mix maybe was darth already in the mix at that point yeah yeah darth was the first creator i actually um talked to i think darth had like 3,000 subs and I had like 2,000 subs and I got an right, email. Okay. From, I got an email from Darth wanting to collab. Yeah, it was, it was fun times. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So I just talk us through that that journey then over the last five years. I, I appreciate it. at some point you're going to get to a point where it's like, you know, I've done everything I feel like I can, I can do in this game content wise and it'll be time. I'll, I'll have this as well. It'll be time where you just, just decide that's going to be it. But I'd love to hear, you know, how it's been for the last five years, some of your highlights, that type of thing. So yeah, just kind of like talk us through that journey. Yeah, so I was originally, I was a Diablo three content creator and uh, and I was just kind of bored one night, uh, not able to fall asleep. So I was looking through the app store and something to mess around on for an hour until I got tired. And it was sure. Rage Shadow Legends. I was like, oh, what's this new game, uh, Rage Shadow Legends? And so right. I downloaded it, played it, found myself uh, logging in the next day at work. And I was like, wait, do I actually like this stupid mobile game? Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. and I was, I was playing it for a few days and I was like, you know what? Uh, I, I went to look for content um, yeah. and there was literally nothing, literally nothing. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I should, uh, maybe I should do videos on this. And in my first videos, I'm literally using my iPad. I'm like looking down the whole time while I'm recording. Right. 
and, I, and I'm like broadcasting it to my PC and the videos are just trash. They're so bad. Um, but I was just trying to kind of, you know, uh, fill a demand uh, that, that wasn't being met and, and give my thoughts on the game. And, and originally my channel was going to be reviewing mobile games. Oh, I'm going to play a game oh, for okay. three days. Yeah, I'm going to play a game for three days and then I'm going to let you know my review of it. I'm going to, you know, go through and yeah. review the graphics and the gameplay and, and, and all that. I did that for Raid and then I ended up just doing more Raid videos and then here we are five years later. <laughs> yeah, Dan, like when you start to look at some of your old videos, um, obviously you started off really without any thumbnail. It was just literally just a screenshot, I guess, from your iPad. Um, and then you kind of went into this phase of, I'm going to use their wallpaper, but just kind of like throw a load of text on it. It's, it's so funny, actually. I love this, seeing like initial starts of channels to, to when they kind of get to the point where, you know, you're obviously honing your craft and, and all that type of stuff. Because these thumbnails, let's be clear, they suck. Like... No, uh, I know that. Oh, I know the, the, the content is horrible. It's, it's so bad. Um, but it's funny yeah. to kind of, you said, to see the evolution. Yeah, yeah. But, but I remember like back when I started playing and I was craving content there really wasn't a lot of people that were doing content uh compared to now now there's i mean there's literally like hundreds i guess at this point yeah, yeah, yeah. um but i remember when i first started playing raid and i was like right i just want to know more about this game and executional is one that sort of sticks in my head as there were so many guides on execution i like must build rare super cool champion and i was like christ i need to build one of these out but honestly like I don't know if it was misinformation or, or it's just like super exaggerated, but I was like, I don't feel like this guy's really helping me out a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah I mean, well, it was it was a different time back then. Like, um, you know, champions were way worse overall. Um, yeah, and and even looking back on it, there was some decent logic in it because you know everybody was looking for that like Tayrell character that you can sure. build in in Life Steal that is sturdy because Life Steal is better on defensive champions because the healing is, is tougher to remove on a high defense champion. So. It kind of made sense for the for executioner, but he was oversold a little bit and overhyped for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, is there any video that you kind of look back on and think, "Damn, that's e either what an awesome video," or like, "I can't believe how many views that video got." You know, one or the, one or the other, or perhaps perhaps one of each. Um, yeah, I think I think I was maybe one of the original ones to do like a a video about the the like standard composition, you know, of like booster into debuffer into nuker so okay. it, it's one it's one where it's got like the four avatars it's like it, it's like you know a pot the carry spirit host kale or something but it's yeah. like free to play arena team and it got like three hundred thousand views or something um oh, yeah, okay but nice that was one where i was like oh okay like people are wondering like what's the the standard like uh like meta team i think yeah. it's called like yeah. i think it's called like best free to play arena team or something all right okay and and were you were you seeing other creators do stuff like the shard pool videos and things like that? Like, where did that come from? Because I, I remember when I started my channel, I actually was like, I'm not going to do shard pools. Like, they're, they're not my type of content. Um, and anyway, you kind of get sucked in because they just do so well. But had you seen them before in other games? Or like, where did that come from? Yeah, no. Um, well, you know, my best friend back then in the content universe was Darth, and and, yeah. and Darth is all about the hype and the and the dopamine and the wailing out. So I did kind of naturally get get uh get kind of pushed in that direction just from right. streaming with Darth and interacting with him. But yeah, he, I mean, he might have been one of the first ones in the raid community to be doing like the the like big shard pull sessions. And and what's funny is, is back then we had we had no heads up. Like we would just wake up in yeah. the morning. Oh, there's a two X ancients. Oh, I have four ancients. Well, this will be fun. Like, sure. so uh, there wasn't like the 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 clear cut rotation and the and the knowing a month in advance when an event's coming up. Yeah, and and I guess as well, you know, in terms of the game, they actually released a, an old build to us recently where you got to see kind of what the game looked like, whatever, four years ago. But in terms of the game, I mean, what probably half the champions there are now, something like that, or maybe even less than half, actually. Yeah, yeah, probably less and, than half. And in terms of features, I mean, obviously Clan Boss was still around, but there was no, what, Faction Wars? There was only one arena type. Like, it must have been, I guess, pretty challenging to do content on a daily basis. You know, there's yeah. just way less that you could do content on back then. Well, and what I would do is on those, like, down days, I would upload a champion guide. Um, and then, so it'd be funny, because I would upload, like, Shaman a champion guide. And the comments yeah. would be like, 
I'd be like, oh, Chosen's a scrape in the barrel today. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because actually, look at your popular videos. It's just a lot of, of them are champion guides, like epics, um, mainly epics, actually, mainly epics that have, have turned, just kind of like risen up your, your view count, um, which is super cool, you know, in, in terms of like those, those kind of like must build, must, must pull type of champs. Um, yeah, I mean, you would have been one of the original ones. This is the one that blows my mind. Spirit Host with 120,000 views. Yeah, isn't that like, so funny? What the yeah. hell, man? Like, what the hell is going on with that? It was a way different landscape back then. You know, uh, you know the reason I got into Raid is because there was, like, very clear demand for it. There was no yeah. one doing the content. Now it's a little bit of the opposite. It's like, if anything, there's an oversaturation. There's, like, more content than it, than is needed. Um, so it's sure. definitely, like, a, a 180 shift in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... Do you feel like, um, obviously, you're coming to the end of your life with Raid, which is why you decided to to kind of like, you know, pull the videos. And in fairness, you've done, what, 2,000 videos in five years, which is pretty, is that basically a video a day? Yeah. On, yeah. on average? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yep. did, did you get to a point where you were just kind of feeling burnt out from the continual, you know, grind? So I know you weren't just doing videos. You were streaming long hours and, you know, um, it took me through how, how that was for you. Um, I, I, I come from the, the Starcraft universe and the Diablo universe and, and I'm a grinder. I mean, I used to practice Starcraft 14 hours a day and then I would grind right. Diablo three, 14 hours a day. I was in the best hardcore clan. So I really don't burn out. Um, you know, like anybody, anybody who watches my content knows I never had like a week where I disappeared. Like, like I, I don't really burn out. I can keep going. Um, actually the hardest part for me throughout the years was uh was like my my voice my voice would hurt sure. from from talking like eight hours a day you know yeah streaming I, I had that a lot as well actually yeah and, yeah. and, and it's not even just talking you got to be like hey yeah, what's up? yeah you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so so it, it's not even just casually uh like hanging out in your living room it's it, it, it's it's like forceful talking so i'd have to constantly have like you know cough drops and stuff and I went to the doctor, had them look, and they're like, no, nothing's wrong. You you, you just talk too much. <laughs> so, right. And, and like you say, if you're streaming it, actually, we were talking to Darth the other day, weren't we, on a Fateless podcast, and he's saying he was doing like 10-hour streams, like consistently. And I was like, dude, like I was doing five, three-hour streams a week, and I had the same problem that you are talking about there, like videos plus the stream. I couldn't deal with it. My throat was just constantly like on the edge of, of breaking down like it just wasn't yep, going to happen yep, so yep. i couldn't imagine doing that sort of you know length of time consistently that, that darth's doing right now um, yeah he's a he, he's a he's a grinder <laughs> yeah yeah i mean what from from your time playing raiden what, what's been like your when was your favorite time to actually enjoy the game do, do you um, think it was more towards the beginning or actually, you know, is, is there a certain feature that came out? It was definitely the beginning um, when, when none of us had a clue what we were doing. And it, it was, yeah. you know, every day was like random stuff. Like, did you hear uh, so-and-so used Zelata to clear Ice Golem 15? You're like, what? No way. I have a Zelata. I got to like, yeah. you know, none of us had a clue what the champions did. We, 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 everything was so unoptimized. We we're all learning so much every day. It was a really fun time to be learning as a community and, and that's why the streams were popping off and the videos sure. were popping off because uh there was such a thirst for for knowledge on this new game and no one knew uh, anything about it yeah and i know you know when we spoke about this before you mentioned that you think it's unlikely another game will come into this into this type of space and you know for a creator like you that's basically just sort of stumbled on a game and popped off like you, you basically blew up you know biggest creator in the space um you were saying that you, you think it's unlikely that that's going to be possible for creators to to basically do that again because games generally are released with like a you know alpha stage, beta stage, and they're just way more publicized. Like, talk us through what you think with that. Yeah, I think Raid is the last game we're going to see that is like that, where it releases and there's no content and there's no tier lists and no one knows what they're doing. It's kind of the end of an era. It's not going to be like that anymore. Any game that is the caliber of Raid Shadow Legends before it even releases, it's going to have websites covering it. It's going to have 75 YouTubers. It's going to have tier lists everywhere, spreadsheets everywhere. So really, we're not going to see it again like it was back then, but it was a lot of fun to be a part of. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, I guess what's next then? So, you know, five years doing doing content on Raid. Um, where do you go now? 
Yeah, so obviously the 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 number one answer is you know Fateless. I'm super excited with uh with, with the gaming studio that that you're building and and included me uh, as part of the process with helping design and, and manage some of the community type stuff. So that's the the big project uh, that, yeah. that I'm stoked for uh, where that's going to be in, in a year or and, two. Um, maybe maybe talk people through what you're doing on a day to day with that because it's probably not. I mean, they might have seen the videos, but if they haven't, it'd be good to kind of share your involvement. Yeah, sure. So I do about. Uh, like 60 or 70 percent game design and then maybe 10 to 20 percent like organizational type stuff like uh you know for meetings and, and taking notes and, and organizing projects and then another maybe 10 or 20 percent of like community management you know helping uh plan what's going to go out on social media or host the podcast or line up podcast guests and, and manage all that get it to the editors and stuff like that so it's a little bit of game design with community and social management and organization yeah, and obviously we were out at GDC uh, in San Francisco just uh, just recently. Uh, I guess firstly, have you been to an event like that? You know, in, in that, I know you've been to like a TwitchCon, but have you been to an event which is a bit more kind of like business or industry led? And you know, and what were your thoughts on it? Yeah, um, the closest thing would be TwitchCon, but no, that was my first GDC, and I've I've been to like uh, professional gaming tournaments like MLG or something for StarCraft. Okay. But yeah, um, but no, G that GDC was like my first, you know, business conference um, around gaming. So yeah, it was a lot of fun to to get to network and which ended up going amazing. We made we made some yeah. awesome connections just like randomly out of dumb luck. Uh, so crazy, so. right? I, I couldn't <laughs> believe some of those those conversations, honestly. Like, so it was nowhere. really good that we ended up going. Yeah, yeah, and and so I guess you know you mentioned you're doing a, a number of different things for the team at Fateless. What pushed you in this direction? You know, what, what made you kind of reach out and say that I want to be involved? And yeah, you know, because obviously from content creator to game design is, is quite a, a, a step, a quite, you know, quite different. So yeah, what, what kind of made you go that way? Yeah, it's always been a goal of mine, honestly. Um, probably my, my top two goals would have been to either be a game designer, like, uh, you know, be able to give input on the direction of, of game design and what decisions to make on, on building a game, or to be like an esports broadcaster, um, you know. Okay. Like, like, yeah. I, I used to love casting show matches. Like, oh, he's taking his Marines around the top left. He's gonna be hitting him from the six o'clock. Like, I, I love broadcasting and, and and shout casting events like that. And I used to do all sorts of show matches for StarCraft on my YouTube channel. So if you give me a choice of any two uh, occupations, it would probably be either game design or like a like a broadcaster, uh, you know, type of type of thing. So I, I I'm loving it and, and I'm super stoked for the role over there at Fateless. Yeah, nice. Well, I guess um, I mean, the game's still at least a year away. Um, obviously, with YouTube now kind of like taking a bit of a backseat for you, do you think you're going to stay in the raid scene? Are you still going to play Raid Shadow Legends and, you know, these other type of games? It's a good question. Um, you know, full disclosure, I, I, I spent about... Sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars on my rate account. Oh, uh, okay. I, Sixteen to eighteen. I, I got no wow. problem being uh being transparent here. Uh, so yeah, it, it would definitely be a bummer to just you know throw it away. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so and, I, I, I'm and sure. Where are you at? Are you are you playing actively day in day out now? You know, are you literally like in there doing your clan boss hits, doing your doom tower grind, that type of stuff, or are you taking a bit, a bit more casual? No. I was, but lately I've been trying to get top 100 in AFK Journey. So um, <laughs> right. if I have if I have free time after Fateless work, I've been uh, doing their. They have an awesome normalized PVP mode, and I have a goal cool. of trying to get in the top 100. So I've been I've been doing that. Um, but nice. so I, so may, so maybe the last like week or so, I've been pretty bad about playing, but. I, Probably at least you know do my duties with with my clan. I wouldn't want to like ditch them, and and I am talking with with some other people in the scene on, on some possible projects and stuff. So there's still there's still a, a few moving parts of of at least like keeping my my hand a little bit in raid from behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess um, it must be quite tough. You know, I'm I'm thinking personally when when it gets to the point where I'm like, you know, what, I'm going to stop. Uh, my YouTube channel, uh, for whatever reason, you know, it's just like time has come. It must be a really difficult thing to do. Bear in mind, it's, it's a number of years of your life. It's literally day in, day out content. What am I doing next? You know, who am I interacting with next? Like, how do you feel about it, like, personally? Yeah, no, it's, it, it's definitely really hard. It's like the, 
it's like the third time I've had to make this decision. You know, I had to upload a video quitting StarCraft to move on to Diablo. And then I had to upload yeah. a Diablo video uh, quitting Diablo to move on to Raid. Um, the truth of the matter is on why I'm leaving Diablo 3 is I've got an opportunity with another game. I've been making content for it and it's been um, very fun and exciting and doing really well. And I've been in talks with the developers of the game and, and I'm getting access to them to be able to talk about things and, and, and be one of the leaders of the community. So I'm, I'm going to dive in head first and, and go all in with it. And, and, and now I'm uploading a raid video to move on to like Fateless and, and other projects. So it's hard every time, uh, you know, cause you're giving up on something you've done for years and you've got a lot of connections and a lot of friends and, and it's a, it's a shock to your system, you know, for, for five years, my life was wake up, make coffee and get to work on raid. And, and, yeah. uh, and now it's going to be, you know, wake up, make coffee and get to work on Fateless. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 It's, I it, mean, it's how, a shift, but yeah. How many hours of your day would you, would you say were like devoted to something raid related? Like whether oh, it's gosh. making a video or streaming or prepping or uh, like, like whatever it is. 15 hours. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, every single infographic you see, I mean, I, I tried to make high quality stuff. It was usually two hours, like just for one graphic and then all the spreadsheets and and all of, like the theory crafting, talking with people on Discord and, and the recording and the editing and the streaming. I streamed, I think at one point I hit like 398 out of 400 days streaming. Wow. Um, God, that's, actually yeah, so, that's mental, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so like when I was in the thick of it, you know, uh, it was it was like fifteen hours a day. Yeah, it was it was literally my my life was raid. Yeah, that's actually mad. <laughs> I mean, it's mad, but I also know what what it feels like as well. You know, yeah, yeah, you um, know like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's quite fifteen hours a day, but the thing is, the thing what people don't realize is it's not just the making the video, the editing, the thumbnail, the streaming. It's also responding to comments you're in the discord you've got conversations going on like that loop of it that that kind of all the external stuff is probably an equal amount of time to the active stuff which and and that's actually really important if you're trying to foster a community or you know trying to make sure that you're really delivering on on what you you say you're going to do you know it's like okay and i'm doing there's... this video on a guide well if people have got questions on it you know being there to to support is, is actually important as well well, yeah, and, and then something people never account for is the stuff that never makes it to a video. Like, yeah. I'll spend I'll spend two hours working on, like, a Fire Night team, and I just can't get it to work. And I'm like, well, okay, that's, that, that's trash. I got to move on to something else. Or or I'm working on a spreadsheet or an infographic, and I'm like, eh, you know what? This, this isn't going to make a good video. And then you just throw that away. So there's there's probably, like, 25% or so of your of your time and your stuff that never actually, like, makes it to content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's cool, man. Well, look. I think I'd probably speak for everyone in the community to say it's been awesome seeing the progress of your, your kind of like content, seeing almost having like that first person that was confident enough to kind of jump in to this space and get it going. Because honestly, I think without creators that come into to any game space and and try and push it to like the next level, the next level, the game doesn't really take off in the same sort of way, especially when you're talking about the kind of like, I guess the the social um, aspect of the game. So, I mean, yeah, I used to watch your videos pretty much every video when I first started playing. I'm sure there's tons of people that still play the game that had the exact same experience and uh, almost like awesome work, man, for for doing it for so long. Yeah, no, thank you, and and, and thank you to the raid community again because all the. All the opportunities that I've had of, of going to TwitchCon and, and, and working with Fateless and, and all the doors that have been open to me are because of people subscribing and, and watching and, and supporting me and, and, and allowing me to, to have some of those opportunities. So I can't say thank you enough. And I'm not quitting because I, I hate Raid or I hate Plarium. It's just, uh, it, you know, there's other opportunities to move on to. And you were, you were talking about how tough of a decision it was to, to kind of like yeah. dive in. So at the time I worked in finance, I worked at a bank um, right. and, and I was, I was traveling around like working in a few different branches and stuff. And I was like wondering, I was like mowing it around in my head. It's like, do I go full time with this? Which back then it was a big decision because sure. um, it wasn't yeah. a guarantee. It's like, what if Raid dies in five months? Um, yeah. And so I remember um, I, I finally decided to take the plunge and, and I put in my notice at work and literally, you know what happened the next day? What's that? They announced the pandemic. 
<laughs> oh, okay. So, so actually, oh. damn. Yeah, crazy stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, great. I just quit I, my job, and I, and I, and now I'm venturing out into a into a worldwide pandemic with no job, and who knows what's gonna happen. Yeah. And uh, so I'm calling around. I'm trying to get health insurance as like a self employed person. <laughs> right. And, okay. And, and everyone assumes that I'm sick. They're like, they're like, oh, just oh, you know, no. this doesn't this doesn't kick in for four months or whatever. I'm like, I'm not sick. I'm just <laughs> I'm in between jobs because yeah. you know. Like the day they announce a pandemic, I'm sure they get a flood of millions of people wanting health insurance. Yeah. And so, yeah. so it was just the whole, the whole, that, uh, that so whole. In <laughs> hindsight, though, do you think, so obviously at the time it would have been super worrying, but was it perfect timing? Do you think, you know, in terms of like handing that notice in, pandemic, more people playing games, all that type of stuff, do you think it ended up being just like a silver lining or? Um, Looking, uh, or Looking back on it, I was too, I should have done it sooner. I, I was too right. worried. I was too conservative. You know, when, when, when you see an opportunity in life materializing, you go for it. You know, uh, yeah. if, if you fail, you fail. But like those, those opportunities don't come along every day. And, and I, I should have acted like six months sooner. I should have just been like, you know what? Uh, you just know, go for uh, it. Yeah. Just, just make it happen. And, and the bank told me, you know, like, Hey, if it doesn't work out, you know, you, you quit on good terms, call us and, and, and we can work something out on getting you back in the loop. So I should have taken the plunge sooner in all honesty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we're all glad that you did in the end, man. Cause you know, you've put out some awesome content over the years. You're a big character in the space. Uh, it's, it's cool that you are still kind of like keeping your hand in at least, you know, whether it's supporting uh, other creators or, or at least just kind of like, being there, you know, in the fateless, fateless group. And obviously we're all connected anyway. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been a blast. I, I guess any, any last words before we kind of, you know, round this one off? Nope. Just, uh, just thanks for all of the, the people that worked with me like yourself and, and helped collaborate and the raid community, probably out of all the communities I've been in overwatch, starcraft, Diablo, Raid community probably the most like helpful and collaborative and and you just people getting together and sharing ideas and and interacting with each other. So made a lot of good friends over the years and met a lot of cool people in the raid community and, and got an amazing amount of support. So yeah, just for the third time, I want to make sure and say thank you to everybody. And uh, I'll try to keep an eye on what's going on. And I work with you know you and Safira and and Ash. So I'm sure I'll still kind of passively be around. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Well, look, I'll tell you what we do. Um, thanks for coming on. Why didn't you round this video out, man? Last one, go for it. Cool, cool. Well, everybody, uh, thank you for watching and joining us here uh, on Hell Hades' channel. And I appreciate everything throughout the years. And Hell Hades, we'll see you soon in the next video here on our channel. So I will uh, not see you soon, but Hell Hades will. Peace. <laughs>